Today's reading is from John 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We ask the Holy Spirit that will speak to us. Please, God, open our hearts this morning to receive your spirit and to run with it to identify the need for Jesus every day of our life. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to see you again. Yes, uh, this morning we want to look at uh, the identity of Christ. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5. But before we, before I, you know, go into the world, I want us to say this sentence here on the screen. Affirmatively, confidently, I will say, Christ in me, the hope of the glory. Christ in me, the hope of healing. Christ in me, the hope of salvation. That is it. We will say it again. Uh, with assurance that we know what we are saying, with hope and with confidence, and of course with faith. Please let us say, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of healing. Christ in me, the hope of salvation. That is it. Our whole existence, our whole existence, our whole existence is because of Christ. The identity of Christ is our test this morning. Jesus existed from the beginning, not as a creation, but as eternal God. Uh, he was with God, and this indicates a personality, a distinct personality, yet a perfect unity, united to the Father. John begins his gospel not with the birth of Jesus but for the beginning of creation. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. Now, this opening statement reveals Jesus' divine nature and eternal existence. If you look at the Gospel according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they talk more about uh, the human nature of Jesus, and of course, they talk about his uh, divine nature. But St. John's Gospel dealt more with the divine nature of Jesus Christ, telling us that Jesus, though he was man, but he was also God, who came into existence. Unlike any other figure in faith or history, Jesus is introduced as pre-existing with God, distinct, yet fully divine. You know, John uh, opened the chapter with mystery, telling us that Jesus Giving back, I mean, in the beginning it was it was with God. That means they created the universe together. Now, but then he came as a man and all that. Uh, the term God is significant in the cultural context, context of uh, John's audience. It represented divine reason or creative order. Now, John was addressing a particular audience when he used the word. The word. That is, he, the word is like a command, something they use to create something. Or uh, a word is the what they say to create an order. So Jesus was what God said. If you understand what I mean, Jesus was, was what he spoke out to create you and I. Now, John was addressing these particular people, the Jews and the Greeks, and he was addressing them based on their understanding. And like I said in the morning, 
when Jesus was addressing his audience, he said, I am the bread of life. You know, I use that as an example. And I, I think I've said it here before. If Jesus was addressing us as briefly, he would say, I am the cup of tea of life. Mm -hmm. He would say, I am the coffee of life. Because he knew that to an average British man, to an average British person, a cup of tea is important in a day. An average British person will not go in a day without taking a coffee. And that is how, and that is, Jesus is also important to you and to me. So as much as we are taking a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, that is how we should take Jesus and see him. That is, without him, we are nothing. So that was, in the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. That is, Jesus was God himself. Yes, John's use of logos connects Jesus directly to both the Jewish understanding of God's words in creation and the Greek understanding of the rational force that gives order to the universe. That is, he gives order to the universe. Jesus is the order, you know, that God put out to make the universe. Now, the world was with God implies a distinct personality and a relational aspect within the Godhead. That is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are together. The distinct personality he is, you know, he is there at the beginning. And yet he came in form of a man, you know, at Christmas. We sing at Christmas, uh, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We celebrate the birth of God coming as a man. Now I was I was thinking, why will God come as a man when he is God? He can just pop out somewhere. But then if he had pop out somewhere, you and I wouldn't have believed him. We would have what is like, who is this person that just came from nowhere? But then God came as a man to soil his hand, to dirty his hand just as we are. And of course I realized. The first man, Adam, he was created as a man. So he didn't know what it means to grow. Because he was created, he was made as a man. He didn't know what it means to, for parents to say, oh, come here, go and do this, go and do that. He didn't know what it means, and then he failed. And of course, the second man will not come as a man. So God came as a baby. You know, I, I was reading somewhere where, where somebody was asking, why will God, if, if he created the world, ascend a man to come and redeem the world that he had created? Then I realized that this person doesn't have understanding because the sin came into the world through a man. Mm. And of course, we need the blood of a man to save the world again. And yet, Jesus, who was there at the beginning, who created with God at the beginning, you know, had to come to redeem what they have created. I hope I'm going to say this morning. So he had to come to redeem what they have created together. And that was why he came as a man. We are going somewhere this morning. Now, Jesus is fully God, sharing the same divine essence with the Father. He was, you see, this particular passage, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If case not if case not taken, you will, you will misunderstand the whole concept. Because at the point I was confused myself, talking about the world, the life, the life, and all that. Talking about Jesus. Now all things were made through him, and without him was nothing or was anything made that was made. Here, John emphasizes the active role of Christ in creation. This asserts Jesus' sovereignty and omnipotence. Reminding us that every part of creation exists through him and for him. And don't forget, you and I, we are part of creation. We exist through Jesus and for Jesus. That is, our existence outside Jesus, we are nothing. Now, come to think of it. You see people outside Jesus, they don't, you know, at a point, they forget who they are. They've lost their identity. But for you and I, we know who we are because we are in Jesus Christ. And that is why you see people that we are celebrated, we are celebrating today, you know, in the world. They will tell you, this is who I am. Oh, I'm no longer this person. Because they've lost who they are. They don't know who they are. 
But in Christ Jesus, we know who we are because we are created by Him and for Him. And that is why, if you are having any situation, what we need to do is to go back to the manual setting. To go back to the, to the creator who made us. You know, if we, if we buy anything online and we go to copy them or set them, we go to the manual. We check the manual. So you and I, if there is anything that is wrong with us, spiritually, financially, in any challenges of life, all what we need to do is to go back to the one who made us. Through Jesus Christ. Because we have an identity. Amen. Yes, Jesus he is not merely a figure in history. He is the originator and the sustainer of life. He's not somebody that we will, yes, we have been Jesus is this, Jesus is that, the world is that and all that. No, he is the sustainer of our life. He is the anchor in which our life will put. Now, in the journey of life, storm will come. All we need to do is to hang on. To the anchor that holds us, the sustainer of our life. And we see he will successfully take us to the kingdom. He will successfully take us to the other side. Even though people are dying. See, there are challenges, there are worries of life that will even come our ways as Christians. But all we need to do is to hold on. For we have an anchor. Even in the storm of life. Yes, he is the sustainer of life. Everything that exists was made through Jesus. This underscores the, his divine power and authority. I, I was saying this morning, yes, last week we were talking about peace. Yeah, from the gospel according to John chapter 20 from verse uh, 19, going uh, downward, when Jesus visited his disciples. You know, the hope of, disi of the disciples were lost when Jesus was healed. Now, they, they locked themselves inside the house, inside, inside the room because of the fear of the Jew. Because those who can kill the master can do anything with the, with the subjects. So they were afraid. But then, in the midst of their hopelessness, Jesus came. He visited them. And he said, the first thing he said to them was, Peace be with you. Now, that tells us that in the midst of our troubled situation, in the midst of our hopelessness, there is peace. The peace that the world cannot give, that the peace that we can only see in Jesus Christ. Now, before he left, he said, and he breathed upon them the Spirit. He gave them the Holy Spirit. I hope I'm communicating. For you and I, we need his Spirit to, to walk through this life, this chaotic life. Now, he breathed upon them the Spirit. And the manifestation of that was in Acts chapter 2 at Pentecost. Now, going forward, in our time and in our age, when we come again, His Spirit in us will be what will attract us to Him when the rapture happens. I hope you understand that. Now, He breathed His Spirit upon the disciples. Then we saw the manifestation of it in Acts chapter 2. When at Pentecost, when the Spirit came down in form of a fire and, you know, they began to speak in different tongues. But when He comes again, for you and I, who are still alive, the Spirit is what will attract us to Him. And, you know, it will, just like I said in the morning, it will be like a magnetic, you know, in physics, it will be like a magnet connecting us, taking us like this and we'll be going. The magnet will draw us up. That is the Spirit of Jesus. Yes. Since all life is created through Christ, every human being has intrinsic value. That is, you are valuable. We are not, uh, uh, we are not uh, valueless. We have value. We are priceless. So I'm telling you this morning, let you know you are priceless. No matter what the past is, you are priceless. Because we are new creatures in Christ. We are priceless. We have value. Don't let anybody talk you down. Don't let anything, you know, talk to you that, oh, you don't amount to anything. No, that is not true. You are priceless. You are valuable. You are an asset in the kingdom. You know, God has placed so much value on you. You cannot just go like that because you have value in you. You have Jesus. You have an identity in Christ. So I'm telling you this morning, dearly beloved, you are valued. 
You are valuable. You are an asset. Don't let anything tell you otherwise. As you journey through life, know this and let it be in your mind that you are valuable. Anywhere you get to, anywhere you go, you are valuable. Even those things are not working your way. I'm telling you this morning because you are children of God. You are valuable. You see, let, let's just go for that. There's a point I want to, I want to note. Say, Jesus is uh, just not a, a life. I mean, Jesus is the life giver. He himself is the life. The life is the essence of all spiritual and physical existence. Life as light. Life in Jesus brings light to mankind, illuminating the spiritual truth and moral clarity. You know, it is the light of Christ in us that tells us who I am. I know I am a man and I will remain a man. It is the light of Jesus in me that tells me who I am, reminds me of my identity in me. I don't want to go into some aspects. But the light of Jesus in us will tell us who we are, propelling us to keep going, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of the challenges, the light in us will keep illuminating our path. You know, when you are walking in darkness and you see, even in darkness, you are, you are taking your right, you are your step to the right steps. The, the light of Christ in us will keep propelling us, you know, keep pushing us. Because we are valued assets. No evil, nothing will stop us down. Yes. Light and darkness. Light symbolizes goodness, truth, and purity. Why, why darkness symbolizes evil, falsehood, and, and, uh, and sin? And the truth is, no matter how thick the darkness is, it can never, it will never overcome the light. And you are the light. Jesus is the light in you. So no matter how darkness, how thick the darkness is, you can never be overcome. We are in a world full of evil. We are in a world full of challenges and troubles. But you can never and will never be overcome with those things because you are carrying the light. I, I, you know, when I was, after my university, there's, this, there's a quote I always tell myself in the morning. As a son of eternal father, I represent him accurately in his goodness. And every day I remind myself, as a son of eternal father, I represent him accurately in his goodness. So everywhere I go, I remind, I remind myself, you are a son of eternal father. So you are representing him. So anywhere I am, either people like it or not, I will represent him. Because I am carrying his life. So dear Lord, without taking the time, when, what I have come to tell you, Jesus was the one who was in the beginning. When the, uh, the world was being made, he was there. And he is the light that we need to journey on. So I present to you this light. In the midst of this darkness of this world, I present to you this light. We need this light to journey on. Yes, I'm not here. Don't worry, don't look at the time. The darkness has not and cannot overcome the light. Despite the apparent prevalence of evil, Christ's light is unconquerable. Nobody can conquer the light of Christ. Nobody, no authority, no religious leader can conquer the, 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 the light of Christ. Even though, you know, they can try, but they can never. Because wherever and everywhere, the light of Christ is shine. The central truth about Jesus is pre-existence, his role in creation, his life giving exists at the essence, and his overcoming light is the essence why we are alive. Jesus transitioned from creation to the present impact of Christ. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus is not just life giver, he is life himself, the light of all humanity. A spiritual illumination that overcomes the moral and spiritual darkness of the world. This is not merely biological life, but eternal life. A quality and essence of the very life of God imparted to us through Jesus. See, Jesus is the light. Then the light shines in the darkness, 
and darkness cannot overcome it. As I conclude, this message this morning is to deepen our understanding of Christ's nature and to encourage a personal connection with Him as both Lord and Creator. That is, we need Him. If we will survive this chaotic world, we need Jesus. If we will survive this, this our life full of challenges, full of worries, even in this, uh, in the midst of this economic hardship, we need Jesus. You know, in, uh, in the book of Genesis, when Isaac, uh, yes, Isaac, the Bible said Isaac sold even in famine, and he reaped the many food. Even in the midst of the economic action, the light will tell you what to do, where to invest, where, where not to invest. Where people are crying, you will be smiling. Because you have the light of Christ in you. But then let me tell you, that does not mean we will not have, we will not face our own problem. We will face our own problem. But then he is with us. Even in the midst of the struggle. So there you go. Why not let us embrace this light? Walk with this light. Let us shine this light. Everywhere we go, uh, in the midst of our, our, of our colleagues at work, in the, uh, within our family settings, anywhere and everywhere, let us carry the light. Let people see us and see the light. Let people see us and see Jesus living in us. Don't forget, He is the, he is there at the, at the beginning, and He will be there at the end. And as we celebrate Easter, you know we are still in Easter season. The power of resurrection that rose Jesus from the dead. If you follow the story of Easter, the power that rolled away the stone at the tomb of Jesus, that power is still alive. And all we need to do is to tap into the power and we see Him working in our life. And with the power and the grace of God, rest perfectly in us in Jesus' name. As I wrap it up, I want us to repeat it again. Christ is the God of the glory. Christ is with me, the hope of healing. Christ is with me, the hope of salvation. Amen. Amen. This is to the shape show. Hope you want to sing this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm gonna let it shine. Could you all go out today and sit down? Every every show, every day we should go out and shine our lights in the world. Thank you. We'll do this.